This dough only took 20 minutes of preparation and it produces an amazing weeknight pizza. It's got this light crispy base and a caramelized crispy crust and that just keeps you coming back to this recipe time and time again. And what's more, the dough can be mixed in five minutes flat in the morning and then be ready to add to the tray when you get home from work. The secret, well that lies in scheduling the process to work for us and not against us. I'll show you how. Right, so into my bowl goes 249 grams of room temperature water. And I'll follow that up with 10 grams of white granulated sugar and then six grams of coarse sea salt. Now I just give the mixture a really good stir because I want to dissolve the salt and sugar. Now I'm weighing out 0.8 grams of dried instant yeast. Now, microscales make this super, super easy. And to be honest, I think they're a necessity for any home baker who's kind of serious about recipes. Now I'll link to these below, but just remember there are absolutely loads of them out there on the market. Now that tiny quantity of yeast, that's gonna allow this dough to ferment really slowly. And that means we can knock the dough up before we go to work. And then by the time we get home, it's ready to pop into the pan. I'm gonna sprinkle that yeast over the top of the water, and then I'm gonna add in 16 grams of good quality extra virgin olive oil. Next, I add 32 grams of whole wheat flour, and that's followed by 287 grams of strong white bread flour. Now it's simply a case of just bringing this dough together with a spoon. But as this is a well hydrated dough, it actually comes together quickly, and easily. Once it's all combined, we can leave this dough to rest in the bowl for five minutes on the work surface covered with a lid. Now I simply bring the dough together into a ball just to keep everything neat and tidy. I guess this bit's a bit optional really. The dough would ferment just fine without the shaping, but you know what, it kind of satisfies my OCD. This is gonna be left on our bench for 10 hours to ferment at 25 degrees Celsius. But it's important to remember, if your kitchen is warmer, the process is gonna go quicker. If your kitchen is cooler, then it's obviously gonna take longer. Now you can increase or decrease the amount of yeast to kind of counterbalance the different temperatures. You know what, some new or inexperienced bakers, they see this long fermentation time as an annoyance or even a waste of time. But you know what? A well-balanced or well-scheduled long fermentation not only improves the flavor of the product, it also enables us to schedule effectively, making recipes like this possible. Right, so check this out. I actually let this dough run on for an extra hour or so. So it's been a total of 11. And even though it's past its peak and you can see it's just started to deflate, it's still perfectly fine to use. So don't stress, you've definitely got a little bit of wiggle room concerning your fermentation times. Now, as this recipe is designed to be quick and simple, I just turn the dough straight out onto my tray, which has been liberally drizzled with my olive oil. Now, I just gently press that dough out so that it takes the shape of the tray. Now, just remember this, at some point, your dough is probably gonna tighten up and it's gonna resist. Don't fight it, leave it for a couple of minutes to relax and then come back and work with it again. Make sure your dough covers the entire tray right up to the edges. Now you can cover it and you can leave it for about an hour or so to rise before we add the toppings. So tell me this, what are you gonna do if your tray is a different size to mine? Do you know how to get the quantity of your dough spot on every single time? Well, I learned this tip from the Italian chef making focaccia here on YouTube. Now my tray measures 30 by 40 centimeters and that gives me a total area of 1200 centimeters. So if I was gonna make focaccia bread, I would multiply that by one, giving me a dough weight of 1200 grams. But for this specific style of pizza, I multiplied it by 0 0.5 and that gives me a dough weight of 600 grams, exactly what I'm using here. So now you can scale the recipe to suit the size of your pan. And of course, the easiest way to do that, the simplest way, is by using a recipe calculator. You can even use it to tweak the amount of yeast so you can adjust the fermentation times to suit your temperature. Now there are plenty of calculators out there, but if you wanna give mine a whirl, then I'll link to it down in the description. It's completely free.
Right, so after about an hour of resting, the dough has nicely increased in volume, it's nicely puffed up. And I just give it this gentle press with my fingers to even that dough out across the tray. And now, it's time to get it topped with our tomato sauce. Now, whenever I'm making a speedy kind of weeknight pizza, I choose a really good quality grated tomato. And then I season it with 1% of salt to the weight of tomatoes. I give it a really good grind of black pepper and then a generous sprinkle of dried oregano. And that is it. I make sure I push that tomato sauce right to the edges and I'm not shy with the amount that I use. This is not supposed to be a polite pizza. I want it to be a little bit messy. I want it a little bit sloppy. That's what makes you kind of feel naughty, a guilty pleasure. Now the secret to getting those lacy edges is to bank the cheese up around the sides of the pan so that when it melts and bakes, the cheese becomes all caramelized and golden and crispy. I just add some prosciutto that I had left over in my fridge, but this is your opportunity really to get creative. And then to finish, I just sprinkle with some more coarse sea salt, some cracked black pepper, and of course some dried oregano. And it wouldn't be a pizza without a generous drizzle of olive oil. Right, so we're gonna slide our pizza tray directly onto a baking steel that's been preheated to 250 degrees Celsius. I've positioned it on the lowest shelf. That's the furthest distance away from the heating elements at the top of the oven. Now, as soon as that pizza goes in, I'm gonna reduce the temperature. I'm gonna drop it down to 180 degrees Celsius, and the pizza's gonna bake for around 25 minutes or so. Now preheating the steel to such a high temperature, that's going to ensure that our pizza base cooks properly from underneath. And dropping the oven temperature, dropping that down to 180 degrees Celsius, that's going to make sure our cheese doesn't get overcooked before our base is ready. Thinking about how the heat is delivered or distributed when baking is key to getting the results that we want. Now you could bake this directly on an oven shelf, but the base may not get quite as crispy. Remember, all ovens are different. So it's our job as the home baker to experiment with different temperatures and setups to work out what works best in our situation. You know, it was only through experimentation that I learned how using a simple espresso pot in my oven would actually level up my sourdough. And you can see exactly how I did that in this video right here. Get out of here, go bake yourself a pizza. I'll see you again very soon. Stay tuned.